You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy, your host for our podcast, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can accept, expect to get some tips and takeaways from each of my weekly special guests. My podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard, now Pacific Daylight Time, on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Spotify, Google, and Apple, and anywhere else that you get your podcast. Uh, Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. That's always appreciated. And as a reminder, I always like to let the listeners and viewers know I do gratitude keynote speaking as well as gratitude coaching, which I'll talk a little bit about on my closing notes. And you can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com or as you can see on the video, thatgratitudeguypodcast.com as well. So let me get on with the show. As I say every week, always my favorite part of my show is my guest which I like to highlight people that have something to say that are smart, intelligent, bright people in the world that can pass on some great knowledge. And of course, no exception today. Dr. Brooke Sheehan, and when I kid her, it's Sheehan, just so you can spell that right. But (laughs) Dr. Brooke Sheehan is affectionately known by her patients as the body whisperer. She has a keen ability to communicate with the human body and discover the answers it holds, making way for healing to happen on its terms. She is also a crypto blockchain enthusiast and is dubbed the Crypto Practor. So she's got multiple uh, hats that she's wearing lately. So Dr. Brooke, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you, David. That was great. You bet. Great yeah. to have you. I always start with the same. I actually start and end every podcast with the same question for my guests. So just to give some context, tell the listeners how you and I met. We met through the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group, the mastermind back in 2021. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think it's been what a year and a half, something like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that was neat. We've met, I met a lot of neat people, and you were certainly one of them. And I, I've commented on various podcasts about the fact that I, and I remember this with you when I first met you. It's just fascinating how you meet people and you instantly connect. You yeah. and I were talking about that before the show started. And then there's other people. It's nothing negative. It's just that you meet them and you just don't have the connection. Mm-hmm. It's just like they go, well, we should hook up again later. And I go, yeah. <laughs> And and later never happened. (laughs) Let me get, let me get back to you. So, so back up, I like people to start somewhat chronologically, talk to me and talk to the listeners about the journey, say maybe not so much high school, but maybe college that started you on and we'll get to where you are today with your body whisperer business and in terms of the chiropractor and the things you do there. And then we're going to talk about the crypto, but kind of start and tell the the listeners how your journey went. Cause I know somebody who is as accomplished as you are as energetic as you are has a lot of things they learned along the way, we can probably pass some of those on to people that are listening. Well, it's been quite the journey, David. I would say my college years didn't even start until I really, truly went to chiropractic school. Mm. I took some college courses here and there after high school for accounting, because in my mind, as a young 16-year-old girl, I always had this desire to be an entrepreneur. I don't know where that came from, but I was like, I really want to be an entrepreneur and I'm going to learn accounting because some point down the line, I'm going to hire an accountant and I want to make sure they're not pulling the wool over my eyes, Mm -hmm. which is really interesting for a young girl to think about, but that's where I was. Uh, So fast forward, I went and took some accounting classes, was working for a CPA full-time who ran a multimillion dollar company and he was teaching me the ropes real hand ropes of accounting and real life stuff outside of a typical classroom. So I was in the accounting profession for 10 plus years before I got pregnant. And then that really set me on a whole trajectory of, oh my gosh, this is not just my health, but this is now the health of an another human being that's growing within me. And I really need to figure things out. 
And this wasn't just physical health for me, David. This was also like emotional and spiritual and mental well being. Mm-hmm. I was a wreck. Um, I say that to your listeners, uh, not to speak down about myself, because I am very grateful for the life that I have right now and the life that I've built. But at that time in my life, I was a wreck. I was making all kinds of bad decisions. I was doing things that were not in alignment with who I am. And I really was not in a good place with my self-confidence. So I, I got to a point with, or I got to a point in my life where I was like, I am bringing this child into an existence and I don't want to be passing on, you know, like years of trauma, like emotional trauma onto this being, because I'm projecting my own emotional feelings of rejection and all these, you know, negative feelings. I don't want to be projecting that onto her. So I need to get help. She was the catalyst that pregnancy with her was the catalyst that kind of set me on this like journey and on this like uh, projection or trajectory that I'm, I'm on right now and going. So I, uh, you know, really went down the whole personal development as well as the physical health road. And so I journeyed down that road a long time and many, many years looking for answers, right. Feeling like there's more internally going on with my health than all of the lab reports were showing lab reports were showing, Oh, everything's okay. Nothing looks out of range. Everything looks great. Oh, no heavy metal toxicity. Oh, this, I mean, I was doing all of these things, looking for these answers, which led me to finding the answer that I was looking for. And the answer that I was looking for was being reminded, finding a practitioner that taught me and reminded me that the answers lie within. And when we stop looking at the body as this, this thing, quote unquote thing that needs to be you know, like shove down supplements, shoving down food, pushing it hard, doing all these crazy biohacking exercises. And we really truly tune in and listen and go, what is it that you actually need? Because those things are all great in theory, but are they great for you in that moment and in that time of your life? Because the body is constantly dynamically shifting, dynamically changing, and it's doing its work to keep us alive, to keep these muscles contracting and the blood flowing in our you know, heart and our, it, through the rest of our body and all the brain cells firing. And so at that point in time, I was like, you know what? I want to practice medicine like, like this person. I want to do like healthcare like he does. And so I was already set to go to chiropractic school at this point in my life. And I left uh, San Diego, California and moved to the Bay Area and started chiropractic school. And I came down back to San Diego and I said, all right, I'm ready. And from that day forth, you know, I've been mentoring under this doctor for two plus years, been seeing my own patients uh, during that time and having so many incredible transformations, not only personally, but them um, as a patient base as well. So it's been quite beautiful. It's really fantastic. And I know we, you're bringing back memories because you and I had chatted about that before mm-hmm. uh, when I did a telehealth assessment and some of the things that were really interesting to me. What are some of the things? Well, first of all, I want to go back to when you were pregnant. Yeah. With, and maybe it was the pregnancy, but were there other things that that's a pretty big shift that you made? And you yeah. said, all of a sudden, I want to get away from junk and I want to get made, paid more attention. And I'm always fascinated. Was it something that happened overnight? Was it over the course of a few weeks or a month or how? Because when you make a big shift to kind of go from hard left to hard right, uh, sometimes it, it'll be an incident or something that happened. Was it anything like that or is it just sort of gained momentum for you? It, uh, to be quite frank with you, I have been, or I was born with a mild case of cerebral palsy. So most people who see me, and if you're watching this on video, you see me and you're looking at me like, oh, she looks normal. She doesn't. Uh, the mild case of cerebral palsy affects the right side of my body. So mm-hmm. I use do everything with my left hand. I can function with my right hand, no problem. But it's not the same way that a 100% able-bodied person would. And cerebral palsy, you know, growing up and, and having this quote unquote condition is something that happens as a result of the labor process, the labor and delivery process from the baby coming out the mother, nothing happens internally, everything's forming, everything's like there 
But when they're, when the baby's coming out, if there's any sort of lack of oxygen and they do not get the mom hooked up in time, it causes loss of oxygen to the brain. Mm. So doctors say that I had like a 5% loss of oxygen uh, during that time because they did get to hook her up to um, oxygen in a matter of minutes. And so that's probably why it's not as severe. Mm -hmm. But for me, when I was about to become a mom myself, I'm like, I don't want my daughter to ever in like have the chance of being born with cerebral palsy. So right. I'm going to make sure that I don't have an epidural, that I don't get hooked up to any sort of drugs or have any like medical interventions unless necessary, right. but I'm going to make sure I do everything in my power and in, in what I know of how to support my body so that it can do the work that it needs to do to get this baby out healthy, safely, no problems. And, and that that's what happened. You know, she's almost 11 years old and no CP and yeah, <laughs> beautiful and healthy. And, and I think it's so important to talk. You had mentioned this before. Um, well, not, not only your daughter, but this, but this particular doctor and I want to be like him. And yeah. when you think back and I remember you telling me that earlier and I was thinking, gosh, it's so important to mentor people and to have mentors ourselves. And this was yeah. clearly a mentor for you. So yeah. in that case, what are some of the things that made him as your mentor a little different that made you want to be so aligned with his ideas and his thoughts and his practices? The key big difference between him and any other practitioner I've ever seen is he really looks to tune into the body and address the body in the specific order in which it's seeking help. So if we give the analogy of you know, David, I tell you, I call up and I say, David, I want you, I'm going to teach you how to build, like make the most delicious, epic chocolate chip cookie. These are the list of ingredients. I need you to go get all of these ingredients and then call me back and I'm going to give you the step by step. So you call me back and you say, Hey, Dr. Brooke, I got all those ingredients that you need for the, that we're going to make this chocolate chip cookie. And I go, you know what, David, actually, I'm going to let you figure it out. You just go on and figure it out. So the ingredients for that chocolate chip cookie are like all of the symptoms or conditions that people come into the office with, or people that I'm working with telehealth, you know, oh, I've, I'm not sleeping well. I have chronic fatigue, my gut issues. I mean, they're, they list, give you a laundry list of things that are going on the list of ingredients. And then we're stuck sitting there trying to like shoot in the dark. Do we deal with the gut? Do we deal with the chronic fatigue? Are we struggling? What, like, where do we start? Where's the process in starting? And his approach is, all right, let's ask the body's questions. Let's ask the body like, you know, specific and like uh, specific questions to get the answers that we're looking for, because the body will open up so much, so beautifully when it's communicated with in a way that it's actually understood. Mm -hmm. You and I both speak English. We both communicate in the same way. We don't need an interpreter. But if I was telling you, and I'm like, just, you know, really pounding in David, your favorite color is pink. I'm buying you everything pink and everything starts showing up to your house. And you're just like, gosh, Brooke doesn't even really know me. Right. Because if she really knew me, she would have asked me questions like, David, what is it that you really like? What kind of gift can I get you? Mm -hmm. And so that the body is no different. And yeah. that's the beauty of this work. That's really neat. That's a great analogy, by the way, too. And that's also a good segue into, I experienced this personally, but I would love to have you uh, illustrate it, talk about it to the listeners and the viewers. Yeah. And that's the dynamic, uh, what is it? Dynamic system. What do you call that? Dynamic system analysis. Now, dynamic, dynamic system analysis. Talk about yeah. that because that was really fascinating to me. And I think a lot of people would like to hear about that and how that works. Yeah. So dynamic system analysis is the, the quote unquote technique. If you want to call it that, that is what I practice. I'm a certified dynamic system analysis practitioner. And, uh, we ask the body different questions through a series of different muscle testing. Uh, muscles are, they act as like the screen on the computer. So if I'm trying to find information from Google or doing like a simple web search, and I want to learn about you know, how, how to play the trumpet in the orchestra. Well, I have to pull that information up on the screen, how to, you know, play a trumpet in the orchestra. So with muscle testing, the body responds to different things. So I can test a certain muscle. And if the body has like a negative response to that thing, the muscle is going to go weak. Oh, I need help there. Oh, I need assistance here. 
And so they're, the body's full of different mapping points is what we call them, mapping points. So if there's a certain place that I touch on the body, like, you know, right at the collarbone and the muscle goes weak, that's indicative of, of some necessary need, whether it's uh, like a physiotherapy modality, maybe it needs some like muscle work around that area. Maybe there's a liver problem. A lot of right shoulder issues relate to liver issues. So you have to look into that. People coming in with right shoulder pain, you know, could very well be like a detox issue. And so dynamic system analysis really looks at the dynamic being of the body, dynamic system, the body is a dynamic system, constantly shifting and changing. And the biggest differentiator between functional medicine, because I know a lot of your listeners or maybe people on here may be like, well, I have a functional medicine practitioner and they do a lot of great work and they do. And I absolutely love functional medicine but the biggest difference between DSA, I'm going to say for short, dynamic system analysis, DSA, and functional medicine is functional medicine will pull all of your labs and they look at every single thing that's either high or low. And anything that's out of range, they go, okay, uh, here's a supplement for that. Here's what we need to do that. Oh, cut that food out of your diet. Do this, do that, do that. What dynamic system analysis says, they, they look at those same lab reports. I can run all of those labs. I do all of that functional testing as well. But we look at all that and go, okay, well, here's all of the holes in the fence or here's all the gaps that need to be corrected. Now, what is the body actually asking for to fix those gaps? Because it's very intelligent and it doesn't need us giving a supplement or a food for every little you know, hole in the fence. It just needs the one or two, or maybe three things necessary. And then it does the rest of the work. It says, Hey, thank you very much. You actually gave me what I wanted. I'm going to give you what you want. Yeah. And that makes such sense. And I think that, you know, you talk about the body whisper, asking the body and the questions and the answers will mm -hmm. come back to you and so forth. Another thing that I thought was really fascinating, and it kind of explained this too, when we talk about dynamic system analysis, but then there's also the, the newer thing that at least I think it was at least newer, given the fact that we're now dealing with so much with Zoom because of the pandemic and mm -hmm. so forth. And that's kind of the telehealth where yes. it's done through Zoom. So kind of tell the novice listener, the people that wouldn't know as much how that part of it works, because I think that's really cool. Yeah, it, it's actually so fascinating and amazing. Uh, you know, the body has like we have our physical skin and bones. And obviously I'm talking to you through the computer. So I can't physically touch your skin and bones and, and embrace you and get a big hug, big David Brook hug, you know? Um, but what I can do, you know, through telehealth, uh, is really work on tapping in without sounding too woo woo. Mm -hmm. Um, but really we have an energetic aspect of our physical being as well. So we have the skin and bones, but there's an energy that our body emits. Mm. And it's the same energy that when you roll up to a red light in your car and you just go, oh my God, I feel somebody looking at me. And you look mm. over and sure enough, the car next to you or the passenger, you know, in the, uh, the car next to you is looking at you and it's weird, but you get that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so that feeling, that energetic sensation, it's something that, you know, we, we talk about loosely. People talk about loosely, like I didn't get a good feeling about that guy. Or, you know, I had like this gut reaction, my stomach hurt after I did X or whatever, you know, it is. And that, that's the energetic part of us. And so with dynamic system analysis, instead of being able to physically test a muscle of a patient that's lying on my table and go, okay, to show the patient, Hey, you're weak. I'm able to muscle test through my own hands. Like I'm doing, you know, testing through my own hands and picking up running through a filing cabinet. Okay, I know that David is in need of some treatment. Well, what kind of treatment? Is it a supplement? Is it an exercise? Does he need to eliminate a certain food? And I run through the filing cabinet. Wherever the energy stops, so to speak, is then where I know to go, okay, now I know it's in this category. Where, where do I find it in this category? And I just kind of follow the lead, the body's lead That's in neat. that. And then talk about, I want to come back a little bit more to your story yeah. after, after the 10 years of accounting and uh, meeting the doctor in the chiropractic school in San Francisco and so forth. Mm -hmm. Talk about how, and, and we're going to get to, before we wrap up, we're going to get to the crypto things. I know that's a newer thing that you're doing. 
But before we get there, talk a little bit more about after that 10 year, or after those first few years, how you kind of evolved, because I know the practice has evolved, the telehealth piece, the dynamic yeah. systems uh, analysis and so forth. But talk about how it's, say, the last five or six years, how has it really changed and, and sort of uh, evolved, I guess, is the best word I could use. How has the technique your practice, evolved? Your whole practice. My whole, whole practice. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in school for, I've only been out of school for two plus years. Okay. So, I mean, I really, I, I was dead set on working with this guy on being, you know, his protege and I was a patient of his. That's, that's the part that I didn't kind of mention before oh, nice. I was already set to go to chiropractic school, but because I had only done a few courses in accounting and only focused in that realm, I needed additional credits to get to chiropractic school. So I was doing a lot of night classes in college, doing like biology and anatomy and physiology, because I'm like, I want to get to chiropractic school with some basic understanding. Plus I have to get these credits anyway. So I rather do them in things that are going to help me instead of underwater basket weaving 101, right? <laughs> I could have gotten three college credits for that, but it's, that's not going to serve me. So during that time, while I was doing this and on that journey to figure out what was going on with me, and I had bags and bags of supplements. And I came in to his office, I remember for the first visit in 2014, it was my younger sister and I, she had just got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune condition, essentially where you, your bowel movements are so active and you just running for the bathroom here and there. And she was like 20 years old at the time. Oh, wow. And very, very sad. And so I came in, she came in, we were in his office 2014 and he was doing all this testing. He was put, doing all this stuff. And we were just like eyes open wide, right? A lot of patients come in here and it makes me chuckle. Cause I remember being that same patient on the table going, what is just happening? But I just feel amazing. I don't know what he did. I don't know what happened. Like what, <laughs> what's going on? And so all of the bags of supplements that I was taking, I didn't need any of them except wow. for one. Wow. And I was taking too much, too much. The minute I started shifting my supplement, um, the taking all those out, taking the one in the correct dose, my body started coming online and I started to feel better. And I started to feel better, like emotionally and mentally. I just felt like so much gratitude, right? Where I'm talking with that gratitude guy. I started feeling this immense, just weight started lifting off my body. Now this wasn't a one visit and done. This was an ongoing approach to like getting my body to the point at which it is now. And I do want to report my sister is now 30 years old. She never had to have surgery. She's never had a cold, like the colonoscopy bag, like nope. none of that, like her entire world shifted after wow. being under dynamic system analysis care. Boy, that's, so. a, that's a heck of a testimonial. Yeah. Given that yeah. Too. That's man, that's yep. fantastic. And, and I think yeah. for some reason too, I was forgetting about the 10 years as an accountant and you and I were talking offline before we started about personality and energy and, and yeah, now it all kind of makes sense to me. I, I just don't see you as the accountant. You know, account, <laughs> accountants don't have a personality I and mean, it's just, I'm sorry, accountants of the world. That's just engineers, accountants. There are certain things that the personality is just, is not a basic core <laughs> requirement. And so there's analytical skills and all these other things. Right. That so that's, but I was forgetting for some reason, I just was picturing you being in practice for a lot longer, but no. speaking of gratitude, I always want to inject this question along the way. How has gratitude, I'm, I'm actually, that's what I preach all the time, a gratitude mindset and and gratitude turns what you have into enough and so forth. How has that been a factor in your journey through life? Huge. It's been a huge factor in a positive way. Because when I started, when I talk about like, I was, I feel like I was in such a dark cloud and it was like, I saw the world through almost like, of course that's happening. Of course that happened to me. Of course, this is not going right. Of course. And the moment that, well, you know, I, I, I do, I did mention that I did start a, my personal development journey, even prior to meeting this doctor. But I think that because I had already gone through a few years of like doing some mental work, and then the work that he was doing with me was just helping unlock different parts of my body that, because a lot of people don't recognize that it's not just physical pain that gets stored in the body, but it's emotional pain as well. Mm -hmm. 
Like our liver, for example, stores our anger, like past anger or like current anger. Gallbladder is resentment. Kidneys store a lot of our fear. And so if you're starting to have chronic issues in some of these organs, you can't just look at functional labs or look at lab like, oh, it's a supplement. There might be deeper stuff in there, which dynamic system analysis pulls out, right? Like if that, Mm -hmm. we open Pandora's box, we have people crying, Kleenex boxes, the whole nine yards, because this stuff is like buried deep in there. So when I, I had started that personal development journey and then started seeing him, it was just like night and day. So gratitude to get back to the original question and not be so off on a tangent, but gratitude was such a big part of the whole healing process. And it's still part of my daily practice even today. And I love to call it a practice too, whether it's uh, doing forms of meditation, whether it's a gratitude journal, whether it's writing three things down you're grateful for, whatever it might be, it's just such a great mindset and it helps you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And as, as I've said, so when you hear the glass half full, maybe the best analogy of all time, the glass half full or half empty, but you're just, it's the same thing I mentioned about self-confidence earlier. When you're a grateful person, your life works better. And when you focus on all the blessings and it's, it's kind of like the person skidding on ice. And if they're focusing on gratitude, they're focusing on the empty space. But if they focus on the trees, guess what they're going to crash into the trees. And so trees. Uh, something about where your energy flows, the, your, your energy grows or something like that. There's some cliche yep. around that too. So uh, I want to get into the crypto next, but before I get there, I just have to ask you because I'm so passionate about my role as a dad. What's the greatest thing about being a mom? Oh my gosh. I, the greatest, there's so many things. It's so hard to like really pinpoint one of them. Honestly, I really love as I'm growing as a person and, and developing into the woman and the doctor and the, you know, mom and the sister and the, all all of my roles, right. As I develop and continue to get uh, like become that like evolved version of myself, my daughter is watching every single step of that, of the way on that. And it's so incredible to watch her at 10 years old, David, I, I have not even said this publicly at 10 years old, she gets up to use the bathroom one evening. And this was just like two or three weeks ago. And she gets up and she uses the bathroom and she comes back in and she's like, mom, she's like, can I tell you something? And I said, yeah, honey, what's up? She's like, I just want to tell you, I was looking in the mirror when I was washing my hands and I looked at myself and I said, you are pretty. Oh, she wow. was telling herself that wow. at 10 years old, something that took me That's 30 huge. plus years to get to, to the point which I can look myself in the mirror and say, you are pretty. She's saying at 10 years old, my heart, like almost bursted out of my chest. I was just I like, oh my goodness. That's huge. That's huge. 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 And so seeing that and and experiencing that with her and and going through the rough times with her and watching her self-esteem evolve and her get, you know, just grow into this beautiful young lady. It's just, it's so, that's that's my favorite thing about being a mom. And there are many things I know it's probably unfair to say just one thing, (laughs) but I think that's, it's such a good point though, because not that we're looking to assign credit, uh, but you can take some credit if, you know, half the credit, three quarters, whatever, some big chunk yeah. of credit for what she said when she saw herself in the mirror. Yeah. Cause that's so important how we see ourselves. And again, you and I had talked about that offline yeah. earlier. It makes such a difference. And I remember Connor said something to me, my younger son, he's now 27. My older son is 37. And my younger son said to me once, you know, 10 years ago or something, we were having some conversation. He goes, dad, let me stop you. I just want you to be proud of me. And I said, I said, oh boy, I'm stealing that line. And so now when I would call him and I'll talk about some big talk and God, that's incredible, dad, how many people were there and how many people bought your journals or whatever I mean, I go, Con, I just want you to be proud of me. That's all. It's so cool. And that's, but that goes to a connection and whether, you know, how many people stay married, there's so many single parents and divorces, all these things. So maybe it's even tougher than the, when I was growing up that you didn't hear about the word divorce very much or whatever. So maybe it's even more challenging. But as I found out when my wife passed away, you know, one person can do a yeoman's job and do just as good a job if they really put their commitment into it. And I think for me, looking back, just my life, knowing what I know now is I would have had five or six kids because I just love being a dad. It's the best role I've ever had. And you get these little clean slates that start in, and they're just ready to be filled in with all this good information to be a good human. And in fact, yeah. I was mentioning Cardiff by the sea earlier. And I once said to Connor, 
what's the best thing that you're proudest of that you've done? And, and boy, he didn't hesitate. And he said, I think the fact that I moved 1300 miles away to San Diego and started my own life and showed you that I could be responsible. And it's really true. And it got me choked up naturally. But, you know, I've got friends that still the kids are living at home and they, they can't make it through college or they have multiple jobs. So I felt very, yeah. very blessed. So well, we don't have a ton of time left. So I really want to reserve this last five or so minutes about your new journey. Talk to the yeah. listeners and viewers about the whole crypto experience and how it kind of hit you and how you're trying to educate people and what you're doing with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I also love blockchain, love crypto. I'm, you know, crypto factor. We talked about that. One thing, well, with dynamic system analysis to just kind of anchor back into that a little bit, I spoke, you know, the physical body as well as the energetic body and learning to follow that intuition. Cause a lot of my work is physical understanding of the human body, but coupled with the intuition allows healing to happen in this most dynamic kind of way. And so the crypto thing just kind of, I would say randomly happened by happenstance, but I also know that things don't just randomly happen, that there is intention when things do happen in your life. And there's all of these steps along the way. And these, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the term? Like pearls. Like it's just like one to one to one. And, and you just look back and you go, how did all those dots connect? But here we are. And with that, you know, I got into the crypto space last year. I had friends many, many years prior to that, when I was in chiropractic school, telling me to get into crypto. At that time, I had zero understanding. I had no reason to get in. I was on a student loan budget. I'm like, why am I going to invest in something that like, this seems so like such a fad. And here I was last year with a, working with a patient here in the office. And he's like, Brooke, you got to buy this coin. You got to buy this coin. I'm like, oh my gosh, not him too. But at that point I was in a different stage of my life. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to put a hundred bucks in. I'm going to just do this. Like, all right, get this, check the box, get this guy off my back, which is what I did. And for like a couple months, it just sat there. I would periodically go into that app just to see if my money was still there. Sometimes it'd be like $96. Other times it would be like 110. And you'd see the fluctuation as I would go in and out until one random day, like one extremely random day. I'm in the grocery store with my boyfriend and my daughter randomly pushing well we were get grocery shopping and I get this intuitive hit like deep to my chest like boom almost kind of like if if it could have it would have knocked me on my butt and it was like you need to buy more of that coin you need to buy more of that coin I'm like what in the world so here I am because I had not been utilizing that app at all for any sort of purchases or trades or anything so I didn't know how to use it and I'm in there fumbling my way in the grocery store, not even really paying attention to my surroundings other than my boyfriend and my daughter were up ahead, you know, filling the cart with stuff. I was fumbling around, purchased more of that coin. And long story short, the very next day, that coin was just pumping up, 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 percentage, percentage. And I'm like, okay, at this point in time, this is not Dr. Brooke just investing purely off intuitive hits. Because dynamic system analysis requires me to have some basic human knowledge, like human or basic knowledge of the human body and how everything fits and works together. The brain communicates here and blah, 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 hormones, all of it with the intuition. Well, I can't go into crypto with just intuition. I need to have some knowledge and how this all fits and works together. And one of the things that I think is really fun and fascinating about me, and I never really would look at it as a positive thing. It was always like just a random skill that I had is this ability to really connect dots. So I would be like, oh, I know Cornelia, Stephanie, Cornelia knows David, David's connected. So, so, and so, and I would build out this web, like even with patients in the office, I'm like this person lying on the table came as a result of this person's referral who referred this person. And it's weird. I connect dots like that in my mind. And mm -hmm. so with crypto, it was like, all of a sudden, as I was deep in, I was researching and I was connecting dots. And then I realized, you know what? There is so much noise in this web three world, so much noise that a lot of people are fumbling their way through in the dark in the same way that I kind of was. 
And they don't know how to put all the pieces together. They don't know how to make the understanding of like when somebody says you need to buy this NFT, well, what does it mean by I need to buy this NFT and what currency do I use to purchase that? Because I can't mm-hmm. use dollars. What right. do I, how do I transact in this space? And so it's really exciting. I love the educational piece and that's what I'm doing with Dr. Brooke on the block. Yeah. And you know, I was thinking too, uh, we'll wrap up here just in a few minutes yeah. and I want to not keep you too long, but that's almost, and I've seen a couple of years, I did a couple of your, tra- I did one of your mm-hmm. trainings. Yeah. And I'm almost thinking too, I might get a, a link from you and put it in the show notes in terms of just a little bit more of the education about the whole crypto thing and, and yeah. so forth. So I think it's, uh, cause I think it's fascinating. It's the future and, and to be aware that you say blockchain and just NFTs and for people to understand how they work and why they work and, and the way they work and that type of thing. So, mm-hmm. so, well, let me mention, to or at least ask you this too this as I mentioned I always start and stop with the the same question to people and uh, you're still compared to me just a young whippersnapper just snorting out in life just for been on the decade on the planet a few decades and so forth but nonetheless I still love this question as I conclude and that is is what do you know today that you would have liked to have known at 18 that would have helped you and you get to pick one or two things one or two things I wish I loved myself the way that I love myself now. Mm. I wish I didn't care about people's opinions. Like I still care about people's opinions right now. Don't get me wrong. But at 18, I think I cared way too much about people's opinions to the point that I lost my own voice in the process. So if those are the two things for me, self-love and not caring about what people think. And those are really good. And I have asked this question of, I don't know, over 50 podcasts, gotten a lot of great, great answers, but I've, I've had some version of that a number of times Mm -hmm. and it's just so important. And then I'll, I'll say that we'll leave this for the next podcast. So if you love yourself, like when your daughter said, I really am pretty and really recognize that at 10 or 11 years old, that's Mm -hmm. so powerful. So perhaps on a future podcast, we'll have an example of ways you can do that. And so maybe yeah. because the whole thing that I think about when I did that speaker training or different things we're doing, what we're trying to help each other with as mentor, mentees, whatever the case may be, the hats we're wearing, the roles we're playing is to shorten the learning curve. That's what you're yeah. trying to do is, is if I can help you from skinning your knee, then you're going to like this and you're going to learn this. And so learn this little technique or something. So, but I think that self-love that just liking somebody is really a great step. And if you love yourself, it's even a bigger step. And as I've said too, and I think that was maybe more offline, but you're just everything, your life, it just works better. And I, I think mm-hmm. back when things, when somebody says something to you that's disparaging, I call it the best armor, the best Teflon that you can have, the, the barbs of life, the negative barbs just bounce off you. It's just not that big a thing. It's like, yeah, whatever. They're entitled yeah. to their own opinion, but listen, I got to run. And, and it's just, and so how we can continue to do that will be a, a really important thing. So, and especially Definitely. for some of the younger generations too. So, well, again, thank you, Dr. Brooke Sheehan. And as we wrap up today, let me remind you of a couple other things I mentioned earlier. My podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network. It's available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. And I do know that people are struggling with a lot of issues, certainly past the pandemic. And there's all sorts of things from anxiety to depression, things with jobs, health, family, friends, all that kind of thing. And I have a gratitude coaching program that I'm really proud of. And it can propel you forward to achieve anything your mind can conceive. And I notice my clients, I just mentioned this, can dramatically shorten their learning curve on how to get things done and get a derailed life back on track. So I offer a complimentary 30-minute coaching consultation to offer you some on-the-spot coaching and see if I might be able to help. And so in order to get that 30-minute coaching consultation, text the word COACH, C-O-A-C-H, COACH, to 206-371-8309, 206-371-8309. That will send you a scheduler link and then you can get that scheduled and I'll see if I can help. And I mentioned I do the keynote speaking as well as the journals and books and you can get all those information, all that at thatgratitudeguy.com. And lastly, people always want to know about my Monday Morning Minute. I send out a 60 second video every Monday morning, hence the Monday Morning Minute. In order to get that, you just text 22828. You go into your text and type in the number five digits, 22828. And in the message box, type in gratitude guy, all one word. And that'll send you a link and you'll get back to your email and that'll get you on the list. So thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, I end the show always the same way. Remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. 
Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.